is Tyler Malinke, and I'm with Lowbrow Customs. The bike over there is my 1950 dual engine Triumph Land Speed Race Motorcycle. I say it's a 1950. The cases were the same for much, much of the 50s, and I mean, I didn't take apart a motorcycle to build that. I bought like junk swap meet crane cases and bits and pieces and built them. Uh, but yeah, those are pre-units, separate transmission. My first motorcycle was a Triumph, uh, Triumph Bonneville. I just like the way they look. I know them so well. Like I said, I build my own engines. I can just build an engine now, and it's really fun to get lost in that without having to like, I don't need a manual, you know? It's like I know the torque specs and everything. So I really enjoy making those engines be much more powerful than they were stock. I've been racing since 2010 at Bonneville on the Salt Flats. I love old Triumphs, going fast, doing cool stuff. It's actually the second dual engine I built. First one I built in, I think, 2012. And uh, this one I built with two friends. So it's just above and beyond my last one as far as quality, speed, technology, fit and finish and everything. And what I tell people is think of a tandem bicycle. You have an adult on the front and a little kid on the back. That's okay, the kid will still help. Theoretically, both engines are built the same same power and all that but in the real real world that's just not always totally true i time both motors so actually in this case front motor top uh the left piston on the front motor right on the rear top dead center compression stroke so it's firing in a cross pattern and then the engines are linked with a 30 millimeter gates belt and then i've got a, a belt primary on it basically i connect the crankshafts with a belt time the engines and go this bike's kind of intense as far as we spent like a year and a half in SolidWorks CAD designing it. Like I modeled the engines of my kitchen table. And then uh, a good buddy, Dawi Soatenga, uh, he did most of the engineering. He was worked for Buell back in the day as a motorcycle designer. He's a real engineer. So since it's me on this bike and I want to keep myself in one piece, it felt really good to have someone that knowledgeable help with the design. And then my buddy, Tim Fiorucci, Fiorucci Fabrications, did a lot of the fab on this bike. I'm a good fabricator, he's a great fabricator. I mean, working together as a team was probably my favorite part. Because, and then having all these different friends, Jesse at Gasbox, Ben the Frame Tubing, Jeremy at LC Fabrication do CNC parts, our buddy Kerry doing laser cutting. So all my friends putting in their skill set and from all over the country and to take that into this kind of wild bike makes me feel really good, it's fun. Everything on that motorcycle is full custom. I mean, like, the only thing that's like off the shelf is like the rear wheel is like a Buell Lightning front wheel, but then modified. I mean, there's nothing that's not, most of it's scratch built, custom design, you know, hand fabricated, everything on it is touched a lot. The worst part was racing it, my second run, breaking the current record speed and then crashing. And so I came off the bike at 154 miles an hour. I was going up two miles straight, top gear, full throttle, record speed, all of a sudden got a bad head shake, going lock to lock, and low sided. The bike never went through the timing lights. I went through the timing lights over 150, stood up. I broke my hand, I think. I didn't go to the hospital, I just got up and shook it off. Worst part was it was dragged down the salt at 150 miles an hour. Brand new, beautiful bike we've just put two years of work into. And then the next minute, Fucked, you know. The front end on that 32 millimeter, it's like a, for like a 175 cc bike. In hindsight, I should not have used that front end. I think I was getting it's a 45 degree rake. I think it's getting flex in the fork tubes. It caused the front wheel, which is spun aluminum, to start going like this, to the point where the wheel grooved deep into both sides of the steering damper. So that head shake was the entire rim doing this at 154. So now I've got a, a Jixer set of inverted fork tubes, all custom billet trees, and putting a uh, Jixer front wheel on it. It's just 200 mile an hour shit. So again, it's me riding it. I have kids and a wife. I don't want to fucking kill myself. So uh, I do this for fun, you know? Yeah, it's more intense than when I started the design process. It became way more intense um, in a good way. Uh, just trying to overbuild, engineer for strength, make it look good, make it go fast. I mean, it's purpose built for speed in a straight line. And I love form that follows function. There's nothing superfluous on that. You know, everything there has a purpose. And all for the same goal. And I love that kind of thing. You know, it's just, it's a tool with a very limited use, but what it does, it does well. World class, in fact. So do it, you know, do it. You live once, so start. It's like a million tiny steps, right? Like it doesn't happen like in a weekend. 
Uh, I tell people to go to the SCTA website. It's 10 bucks, buy a rule book. It's got all the rules, all the records. That's your Bible. Start easy, you know? Just get something easy, go out, get experience, make runs, have fun. Then like me, over the years, just get deep into it if you want, or don't, just keep having easy fun. Uh, it's just complex fun, but I love it.